From the mind of a roadside artisan here in rural Kotongura has sprung the inspiration to build an aeroplane that hopefully will fly someday. Meet Sani Mohazu, a multi-talented artisan with no formal education. He is a welder who fixes electronics and can even repair cars but is now building an aeroplane. I wasn't surprised when I found him. This is how greatness begins from the least expected places and situations. We are just arrived at this airstrip in Kwatangura, awaiting the arrival of the 90 state governor, when we found what looks like the skeleton of an aircraft parked there. It is a dream of Sani Mohazu being set in motion. Along the way on his journey to build an aeroplane, he met James, an HND holder who studied mechanical engineering from the Federal Polytechnic in Kebi State. He now provides the technical requirements for the project since Sani Mohazu, the initiator of the project, has no formal education. Many years ago, the Wright brothers that developed the aircraft that we're using today began like this. And then today I have Sani and James right next to me. I never had a formal education. This is a gift from God. I began with putting plugs together to generate lights, to batteries and even fixing chargers. I cannot fix POP lights and charge. Uh, the kind of available materials we are having in our areas, you know, are locally available materials. The materials, materials we are supposed to use are aluminium alloys. If you look at the wings, if you look at the wings, what we are having there is sheet metal, a sheet metal 0 0.6. We are supposed to use aluminium sheet, aluminium sheet, that is what we are supposed to use. So the whole construction is uh, fabricated locally. Uh, my inspiration for building this plane began the day the corpse of former military general Mama Kotungura was flown back home here in Kotungura. I can't forget that day, Sani says. I saw the plane with grey color and kept staring at it. From then on, the desire to build one was better than me. The materials used in building this aircraft come mostly from recycled materials, while others are sourced from machines that can simulate the same function. For example, in a modern multi-engine passenger or cargo aircraft, the fuel system is likely to consist of multiple fuel tanks, which may be located in the wing or the fuselage or both. But here, they store the fuel in a 10-liter gallon placed on top of the construction, and two pipes are connected to the two 16-horsepower engines that power the propellers. Modern propellers are fabricated from high-strength, heat-treated aluminum alloy, but these ones are made of wood. And this aircraft, of course, does not use a jet A1 or aviation fuel. The creators use PMS, commonly referred to as petrol, to power the engine. The Wright brothers actually started like this, with their trial and errors, and that's how they got it. So if uh, people like this are being encouraged in the country, uh, I think we will be able to start doing our own right from the scratch, uh, manufacturing aeroplanes in Nigeria, not just assembly only. Headphones on. He receives signal from his imaginary control tower. Flight Captain Sani Moazu is about to hit the runway. Will this fly someday? It might if resources are contributed to this research. But then again, maybe it never will. If it fails to pass the test, it will be subjected to for it to be deemed airworthy. But what is the take home from here? Never despise the days of little beginnings. Building an aircraft that will be permitted to fly over the airspace is not a day's job. There's a lot that goes into it. So it might take a very long time for this dream to be achieved for these boys. But I think what should be motivated is the idea and the initiative or the mindset that sponsors this. If people can come up with an idea to build this, it means there's a technological background or understanding that they have that should be motivated. And